Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Alan Roach, who asked me to review the movie Monster X Strikes Back. And I gotta hand it to these Patreon requests, because sometimes you guys will pick movies that I wouldn't have even thought of doing. I've done my fair share of Japanese monster movies on this show, but believe me when I say that this one is... a little different. <laughs> Monster X Strikes Back is a 2008 kaiju movie made by director Minoru Kawasaki, who's sometimes called the Ed Wood of Japan. I don't know if I agree with that, since his movies aren't really incompetent as much as they are just intentionally weird and silly. I mean, come on, just look at the movies he's made. He comes off like the filmmaking equivalent to an internet shit poster. The guy made a movie about a stuffed cat that makes ramen called Pussy Soup for crying out loud. This seems like the filmography of somebody who's just having fun making completely ridiculous shit for as little money as possible. The full title of the movie is Monster X Strikes Back Attack the G8 Summit, and it's actually a pseudo-sequel to a 1967 kaiju movie called The X from Outer Space. That movie featured a monster called Gilala, which is mostly remembered for how silly it is. Seriously, it looks like something you'd see in an American movie making fun of Japanese monster movies. Now, if you haven't seen the original and are worried you're going to be confused, don't worry. You don't need to have seen the first movie to understand this one. Wait, actually, you know what? I phrased that wrong. Uh, what I meant to say is even if you have seen the original, you're still probably going to be confused here. So as you may expect from the title, we open on a G8 conference taking place on beautiful Lake Michigan. Oh wait, I guess we're actually in Japan. Supposedly this summit is to discuss man's coexistence with nature or something, but really I think it's just an excuse for world leaders to get drunk and bang hookers. Even these reporters sent to cover the summit seem more interested in taking pictures for their Instagram. I also don't know what they're doing in this forest, but hopefully Logan Paul isn't in there being an asshole. Actually, they stumble upon some villagers, who seem to be conducting an ancient ritual. Hmm, you know what? Something tells me that wasn't the right song. If these people are trying to wake up King Caesar, this is not the right way to do it. And I guess even Japan has its own version of people who go, we don't take kindly to your taps around here. Also, I noticed your camera's a little out of date. I can probably get you a deal on a newer one if you like. Back at the G8 conference, supposedly the world leaders here are all based on the real-life G8 leaders at the time, although some of the casting is a little iffy. For example, this guy is supposed to represent former Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper, and... yeah, sure, nailed it. And I think the Japanese Prime Minister might have the runs. I just can't rely on you. Let's do this without the Japanese. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't do a kaiju movie without the Japanese, okay? This movie does get one thing right, though. They made the French guy a horn dog. So is the whole beginning just going to be world leaders talking? <laughs> okay, never mind. This movie got to the monster stuff in less than 10 minutes. Oh shit, Gilala just appeared in a video game cutscene. I knew they shouldn't have had this meeting in Japan. Fortunately for the G8 leaders, Gilala's only attacking stock footage from the first movie and won't get to them for another 40 years. Mamma mia. Alright everybody, until the monster's taken care of, the orgy's gonna have to be postponed. Wait everyone! Are you running away? We are the leaders of the advanced countries! The world's G8! Well, you're definitely not actors, that's for sure. What the American citizens demand is that I stand and fight, not run and hide. What my citizens expect of me is that as president, I kick this monster's ass. Okay, did they hire this guy because he's American? Because I'm starting to think English might not even be his first language. This is President Berger. Yes, that really is the name they gave him here. I'm surprised they didn't just call him President Baseball Apple Pie. Berger tries to convince the other world leaders to stay and fight the monster instead of running away, but Frenchie here's got the right idea. Best use this opportunity to just try and get laid. Man, the Japanese Prime Minister looks so scared, I think his mascara's about to run. Oh, and if you're wondering about the reporters from earlier, their boss yells at him to get a big scoop, although I think the real big story is that there's a giant monster on the 
to lose. Jeez, Gilala just got here and they've already made a Funko Pop of him. And who the hell let the Kenny in? Fuck off, kid. Gamera isn't here, which means we don't need you. Oh, hey, well, what do you know? The movie actually agrees with me. You know, I'm starting to like this movie. We learned from Professor... Scientist guy that the meteor that brought Gilala to Earth was actually a space probe, and it's all the fault of those damn Chinese. No, seriously, they actually blame China for the monster in this movie. China again? The Chinese are always making copy of everything. You sure you're not talking about the Turks? God damn, Gilala's tearing through stock footage like there's no tomorrow. At this rate, they might be forced to film new footage for him to rampage through. Oh well, might as well check what's on TV. Although I don't know what Japanese Gene Simmons is gonna have to say about the situation. <laughs> In addition to interviewing citizens, we also learn that people are cashing in on the monster's rampage by selling various items with Gilala's image on them. Well, I cannot believe Japan would make a bunch of silly products using a giant monster. Wait. Actually, yes, I can. <laughs> Back at the G8 meeting, the military plans to activate a volcano to get Gilala's attention, then hit him with a new super missile. You know, you could just try hitting him with the missile first. I don't know why you need to make a volcano erupt. Harvesting the natural powers of a volcano. Now that's a typical Japanese strategy for you. Whoa, whoa, slow down, pal. I'm having trouble understanding you through that incredibly thick British accent you've got. And I think the robot they made to fight Gilala might need a little more work. Boy, good thing they had stock footage of Gilala at a volcano. Otherwise, they might have had to think of a new plan. However, they run into a bit of a snag. Okay, so the volcano thing didn't work, but maybe digging a giant sinkhole will be enough to stop them. The missile doesn't work either, since Gilala just ends up eating it. At this point, the Japanese Prime Minister does the smart thing and just leaves to go to the bathroom for the rest of the movie. Well, maybe the Italian guy has a better plan. The knowledge of the Roman Empire has been used in the strategies in our plans. Okay, why does the British guy sound more like George W. Bush than the American guy does? That's right, don't mess with Devonshire. I love Jesus, guns, and crumpets, motherfucker! So the Italian leader's plan is to lure Gilala with a missile into a giant hole they just dug? Ah, uh, come on, movie, I was just kidding about the sinkhole thing earlier. Unfortunately, they forgot to make the hole deep enough so he couldn't get out of it. Well, at least they managed to damage the suit a little bit. Roman Empire? Ancient history. There's nothing left in Italy but pizza, pasta, and sex! Okay, take it easy, pal. I'll handle the stereotypical jokes here, okay? You lazy nincompoop bastard wop! Hey, who are you calling a nincompoop, buddy? Japan also appears to have gotten a new prime minister pretty quickly, which is one of the only accurate things in this movie. Hey, come to think of it. I haven't seen President Sarkoji. Wow, they really nailed the Canadian accent there. Hold on a second, I'll fix it. Hey, so where the fuck is Sarkozy, eh? Like, I saw he was just here a second ago. Sarkozy's actually out drinking wine and trying to get some poon, so pretty much what you'd expect a French president to be doing. Je ne suis pas d'accord. Le Japon est un pays gastronome. Ce restaurant est certes bon, mais il y en a certainement plein d'autres. <laughs> ah, quoting Pepe Le Pew, the most romantic of all cartoon rapists. And piss off, fellas. I don't need any Bukaki partners here. The Russian leader comes up with a plan to poison Gilala. I guess Gilala must have said something negative about him in the press. However, all this does is make Gilala pass out. They probably shouldn't have made the main ingredient vodka. Даже если Полоний 210 стал пока лишь снотворным для Герара, ведь впервые удалось его обездвижить. The Russians don't like to admit their own defeat. Разве это небольшой прогресс? Oh well, I suppose you could try suffocating him with a plastic bag, and if that doesn't work, try choking him with a giant six-pack ring. However, the new Japanese Prime Minister has other plans and wants to use nuclear weapons against Gilala. We will not use an atomic bomb! Yeah, America wouldn't even think of using nuclear weapons on Japan. And I don't see how getting Gilala high is gonna do anything. He's in this movie, not watching it. Oh, and if you think I'm joking about Gilala getting baked here... <laughs> Gilala is high as shit right now! <laughs> and 
And now I'm beginning to think I might be high. Since none of the G8 leader's plans seem to be effective, the reporters from earlier remember that they saw a woodcut of Gilala at the village earlier and decide to investigate. Hmm, let's see. Either they're being told of a prophecy that says Gilala can only be defeated by resurrecting an ancient deity called Takemajin, or getting shown concept art for the next Animusha game. Personally, I hope it's the latter. They also learn that the ceremony they saw at the beginning was meant to resurrect Takemajin, which means she's got to learn how to dance dance revolution Japan to salvation. Let's see some of her moves. <laughs> While they try to resurrect Takemajin, the British Prime Minister comes up with a plan to put headphones on Gilala. All this does, though, is make Gilala angry. Damn it, I knew they should have used John Michael Thor. The reputation of Great Britain is completely ruined. You're about as British as NASCAR. And in case you thought this movie couldn't get any weirder, get a load of this big reveal. Holy shit. The Japanese Prime Minister is really North Korean leader Kim Jong-il and he brought his female K-pop minions. I can't believe that's the thing I just said, but here we are. And I'm not sure about Kim Jong-il's voice here. Do you have any idea how fucking busy I am? I cannot believe that I actually have a Chechen standing here telling me when he's gonna take a delivery! Hello? Eh, still more authentic than most of the other accents in this movie. Kim plans to hold the G8 leaders hostage and destroy Gilala using his... Potaydong missile. Ah, come on, movie, is that the best dong joke you could come up with? The real name for the missile sounds dirtier than that. They better wake up Takemajin quick. Ah, looks like Sarkozy just got done fucking this chick with his nose. He gets better penetration that way. She also reveals Kim's plan to him and that she's really a North Korean agent and not Japanese. Sarkozy's okay with that last part, though. He couldn't tell the difference anyway. I think the only reason Sarkozy's here is because he wants to bang Kim's K-pop guards. Actually, if this were any other Japanese movie, I would expect them to all start banging right now. Sucks to be you. You see, Kim, not always a good idea to select your guards based on cuteness. Kim manages to launch the missile anyway, and what's worse, we learn that the explosion will cause the pieces to multiply into billions of Gilalas because... Um... Science, I guess? So is Takimajin ready yet? <laughs> Jesus, they've been singing this whole time and Takimajin still isn't up? What is with these Japanese monsters and not doing anything unless you sing to them? Alright, you know what? I say we speed things up with a song that works every time. Get the fuck up! Simon says, get the fuck up! Throw your hands in the sky! Jesus in the back, sipping yak, y'all, what's up? Girls, rub on your titties! Yeah, I said it, rub on your titties! <gasps> So we finally get to see Takemajin, and I can see why he's the only one who can defeat Gilala. He's played by Beat Takeshi. Uh, Beat Takeshi, Japanese actor and director, does a lot of Yakuza movies. Alright, well look up some of his stuff on your own, I guess. Just trust me on this one. Before the fight can begin, though, Takemajin gets a dong in his butt. <laughs> All right, Gilala, there's only room for one ridiculous monster in this movie. Huh, you know what? This 2017 Power Rangers movie is a lot truer to the show than I thought it was going to be. I don't know if Takemajin removing his extra arms was a very good strategy, though, since it leaves him open to Gilala's stock footage blasts, as well as his dreaded pimp slap of doom. All right, come on, guys. You can't just clinch the whole time. You gotta fight, okay? Things look pretty close, but eventually Takemajin remembers he has a weapon and decides to bring the fight to an end. Decapitation! <laughs> and so, with Gilala defeated, the G8 proves once again that international cooperation is the answer. Even though that's not actually what stopped him. Yeah. Shall we jump in the bath and bear ourselves naked at the GA Summit? See, I told you this summit was going to turn into an orgy sooner or later. 
So, yeah, that, uh, that was something, huh? Like I said at the beginning, I don't think the Ed Wood comparison is a good one for this director, because it's pretty obvious he's just having a goof here. One complaint I have is that while I can appreciate not wanting to do a straight-up giant monster parody, a lot of the G8 stuff gets kind of repetitive after a while, and probably could have been cut down a bit. The humor is also very hit or miss, although I do gotta admit, there were a few times when the movie made me laugh. Considering how weird it is, I'd probably only recommend this movie to hardcore Japanese monster fans, and even they might want to get a little enhanced first before watching this. I will say this, though, I'm a little curious to see how far this director goes in that pussy soup movie I mentioned earlier, but that's a story for another video. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.